Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Christo Zuves, and I'm the medical director at Zuves Fertility Center in Foster City, California. We are located just south of the San Francisco International Airport, and we treat patients from all over the state, all over the country, and from all over the world. Today, we're going to be talking about mock embryo transfer cycle. By the end of this presentation, you're going to know what it is. You're going to know how we do it. You're going to know how it may change your plan for transfer. And you will also know who should do one. So why are we even talking about it? Now, in spontaneous conceptions, 60% of early miscarriages are associated with chromosomal abnormalities in the fetal tissue. When you do IVF and you transfer a euploid or normal embryo, that will usually produce a baby 60 to 70% of the time. That means that 30 to 40% of euploid transfers fail. So why is that? We know the embryo is normal. We've controlled the hormones. We've checked the uterus. So the mock embryo transfer is an attempt to, found, to find out why we fell into this 30 to 40%. Um, and we want to find out, was this just bad luck or probability? Or can we identify something that we can change to get a better outcome for the next transfer? So what is a mock cycle? It can be done with the natural cycle or a controlled transfer, but instead of putting an embryo back, we actually do an endometrial biopsy at exactly the same time that you would otherwise be doing the transfer. We take that sample of uh, endometrium, we divide it into two aliquots, and the first half goes for a test called the ERA test, which is a genomic test to, de to determine the window of implantation. The second half of the tissue goes for the receptiva test, and this is a histological test to check for inflammation or infection. One of the markers is the BCL6 gene, and this is a marker for inflammation, usually secondary to endometriosis. And the second biomarker is the CD138 plasma cell, which is a marker for endometritis. So let's talk about the ERA test, the endometrial receptivity analysis test. Traditionally, we have um, believed that the implantation in a natural cycle and with a natural transfer occurs about seven days after the LH surge. So when we fail with a euploid or a normal embryo transfer, the question we're asking ourselves is, does every woman have the same window of implantation? Or can some woman have a window that's shifted either earlier or later? So this ERA test looks at a series of about 200 genes and these genes prepare the endometrium to become receptive. So the ERA test will then tell us whether we are right in the middle of this window, in other words, uh, that endometrium is receptive, or are we non-receptive, meaning that we're either before or after this window of receptivity. Now, the treatment that we may end up applying is we may need to change the interval from the beginning of the progesterone administration or from the LH surge or the HCG trigger to when we actually do the transfer. Now, the second test is the receptiva test, and this is a histological test and it detects inflammatory conditions that can cause implantation failure. The first marker, as we mentioned, is the BCL6 uh, gene, and this is a marker for inflammation, almost always secondary to endometriosis. The second 
uh, biomarker is the CD138 plasma cell, and that could be indicative of endometritis if we see them in clusters. The treatment for an abnormal level of BCL6, which would be equal to or greater than 1.4, would be Depolupron treatment for eight weeks. And if there was, um, if there were clusters of the CD138 cells, we would want to treat with a combination antibiotic for two weeks. So if somebody fails a euploid transfer and you do the receptiva test as part of your mock embryo uh, transfer, and you find that the BCL6 test is positive. If you do not do any treatment, but you do another transfer of a euploid embryo, the pregnancy rate, the birth rate will be around 12%. If you choose to treat the um, abnormal uh, BCL6, which is related to inflammation, which is usually endometriosis, with treatment, the birth rate goes to 68%, which is where it should be for a euploid embryo transferred with no other abnormalities in the background. So what are the treatment options for the positive BCL, uh, BCL6? You can do laparoscopy, or you can do hormonal treatment in the form of uh, uh, Depolupron. There is a slightly higher uh, trend on the success of the Depolupron, but it's not statistically different. But it does mean no general anesthetic, no, uh, no laparoscopic surgery. And I believe that the hormonal treatment has a better chance of actually mitigating um, microscopic endometriosis, which we, you may not be able to see at laparoscopy. So who should do a mock cycle? For sure, if you have failed a transfer with a euploid embryo, you want to try and see if there's something that you can change uh, for your next transfer. If you have a history of recurrent early pregnancy loss, and of course, we know that we'll be choosing a normal embryo, but a history of recurrent loss may be another reason to check to see if there isn't uh, an abnormality in the receptiva side of the, uh, of the biopsy. The other reason to do a mock cycle, let us say you only have one or two embryos and you worked really hard to generate those. Maybe you have low reserve or maybe you only had one, uh, one or two usable embryos. You may want to go for the mock cycle before you do your first transfer, just in the unlikely event that you may be one of the small group of patients who has an issue that needs to be corrected. And you can then correct that before you use one of your precious embryos. So do sign up for a free fertility seminar. You can either scan the QR code or you can follow uh, the link in the description below. You should also visit our YouTube channel. Again, you can scan the QR code or follow the link uh, below. And this is just a disclaimer to say that the information provided in this video is for educational purposes only and is not intended as medical advice. Please consult a qualified healthcare professional before making any decisions or taking any actions based on the content of this video. Thank you for your attention. I hope uh, that you enjoyed this presentation and sign up for a free seminar and visit our YouTube channel.